it. So let us practice on some past paper questions for payroll. Here we have three questions um, that we are going to do. So for the first question, it says that the payroll information below is an extract from the records of Grace and Hotel for the week ended January 22nd, 1994. We have two employees, that's P. Matthews and R. Barnett. Here we have their salary, their wage per week. Here we have the regular hours worked, overtime, their, the percentage for national insurance and income tax. And you won't find national insurance, a different percentage per employee, because the income tax and national insurance is normally um, a part of the labor laws. So if it is 10%, it's 10% for everyone. So here we have the rate at which overtime is paid. So it is paid at time and a half, that's important. Income tax is calculated on the balance remaining after national insurance is deducted. All right, so the time sheet or the payroll sheet that is given is not standardized, which means that um, you're not going to get just one set format. Six, you will change it up depending on what is it that you're ask, asking for or what objective they're testing for that period. So here we need the regular rate for P. Matthews, the overtime rate. Um, and how is it that we're going to find the regular rate? The regular rate is they're expected to work 40 hours per week. And for P. Matthews, his pay is 320. So we're going to take 320 and divide it by 40. And that's going to give us $8. So it means that for P. Matthews, he's paid $8 per hour. All right. And we're going to do that for Barnett also. So we're going to take the 240 and divide it by 40, and that's going to give us 6. Now the overtime rate, they said that overtime is paid at time and a half of the regular rate. So you're going to take the regular rate, multiply it by one and a half, and then that will give you the rate, which is how much is it that they're paying per hour. So we have 12 dollars one and a half so one would be eight half of eight is four eight plus four is twelve and here one would be six half of six would be three six plus three is nine take it six times one point five in your calculator it's going to give you the same figure all right so here we need to check now the overtime pay so let's scroll up and look on how the hours worked. So P. Matthews worked five hours, Barnett worked 10 hours of overtime. So we're going to basically just multiply the rate times the number of hours. So here P. Matthews worked five, so it's going to be five times 12, and that's going to give you $60 for his overtime. Then Barnett worked 10 hours, so it's going to be 10 times 9, and that's going to give you 90. Alright, so based on the previous part of this video, it did say that gross pay is your basic pay, same thing as regular pay, plus your overtime pay. So we're going to take these two, which is 320 plus 60, and that's going to give you 380. Same thing for Barnett. We're going to take 90 plus 240, and that's going to give us 330 for his gross pay. So that gross pay is his salary before any deductions are made. Right. So NIS, let's look back. NIS is 5%. So we're going to find 5% of gross pay, which is 0 0.5 times 
380. So 5% of 380, that's $19. Then 5% of 330. That is going to give us $16.50. All right, so that's 5% of gross pay and 5% of 334 Barnet. So here we need to take the $19 from the 380 and then find 10% of that. So 380 minus 19 is going to give you 361. Uh, multiply that times 10% and that's going to give you $36.10. Let's check now for Barnet. So Barnet is three thirty minus sixteen dollars fifty. That's going to give you three hundred and thirteen dollars fifty cent fifty cents and then we're going to find ten percent of that and that is going to give us thirty one dollars thirty five cents. Good. Now to find our net pay. We're going to take the sum of our deductions from our gross pay. So for Matthews, it's going to be 380 minus the $19 for NIS and the $36.10 for income tax. And that is going to give you $324.90. Now for Barnet, it's going to be 330 minus $16.50 31.35 and that's going to give you $282.50. So that's what the individual employees will receive as their take home pay. Now to find the total net pay, we're just going to add up those figures there. So we're going to take the salary for both persons and add them together. And that's going to give you $607.05, which is basically signifying the payroll for that week. So for that week, the payroll would have been um, $607.05. Now, part B of the question is asking into which two leisure accounts into which two leisure accounts would this payroll information account be accounted for so basically asking which two accounts would you prepare so the method of payment which is cash or bank followed by the actual account which would be salary or wages so that would be the answer there so it's just the t account if you're given a transaction which says paid wages six hundred and seven dollars by a check and so it's asking which two accounts would you prepare for that moving on to question two so the payroll information below is extracted from the records of allen service station for the week ended April 16, 1988. So we have three employees. We have P. Allen, we have Basco, we have Cummings, their title, their accumulated earnings to date, hourly rate, regular hours worked. So this is how much they're paid per hour. Overtime hours. So we need to work out the rate for overtime. 10% for income tax 2% for NIS um, this is a set amount for life insurance and a set amount for credit union per person so it says that additional information employees are paid weekly which means that they get a wage and not a salary income tax is calculated on the balance 
So income tax is calculated on the balance remaining after national insurance is deducted. Overtime is paid at the rate of time and a half for more than 40 hours per week. Um, deduction for life insurance and credit union are the same every period, which means that right here is a set amount per person, not the same amount for everybody. Um, the year today's accumulated earning do it should be earnings do not include the current week's earnings, so we need to add that to it. And it says that we're to complete the payroll card here. So let us look back on the employee's name and write them in. So we have P. Allen. Um, next employee, we have R. Basco. R. Basco. I'm sorry for moving back and forth but I can't get it to fit and we have incomings all right so those are the employees so we need now to look on their hours worked so it says total hours here so it means that we're going to take in their overtime and their regular hours worked so here we have 40 plus the eight hours overtime so that's 48 for basco we have 40 hours plus six overtime so that's 46 and for mr cummings or miss cummings we don't have any overtime so that's 40 so here we're going to have 48 This one is 46 and here for Cummings we have 40 so that is the total hours worked how much of that is regular how much of that is going to now contribute to overtime and we're going to work out the pay here so 40 hours what's the rate for regular so they're paid $15 for Allen, $8 for Basco, and $5. So we have 15. So we're going to multiply 40 times 15. And that's going to give us $600 here for Allen. For Basco, his rate is $8. So it's going to be 40 times 8, that's 320, and for Cummings it's 5, so 40 times 5, that's 200. Overtime now, overtime is paid at time and a half, so it was, it's $15 per hour for Allen. So we need to multiply 15 times one and a half. That's going to give us $22.50. And then we're going to multiply that times eight because eight of this 48 is over time. That's going to give you 180. Good. Then now for Basco, Basco's rate was eight dollars, so we are going to do eight times one and a half. That's going to give us twelve, and multiply that times the six. Why the six? Because everyone is supposed to work forty hour week. Anything over the forty is considered as overtime, and this is going to be seventy two dollars. Um, Cummings had no overtime, so that would be zero. Your gross pay is equal to your overtime pay plus your regular pay. So this is going to be 780. And this is going to be 392. 
and for Cummings it's going to be 200 so the earnings to date now we need to take this part so we are going to add what is it that they got at this point and we're going to add it to it so we need to take these now and add the we're going to take the 18 6500 and the 230 and add it to the gross pay that we have now so his own Allen own is 18,000 so it's going to be 18,000 18,780 so Basco's um, earning was 6,005 and we're going to add this so that's going to be 6,892 then for Cummings Cummings was 230 yes 230 and we're going to add this 200 to it so that's 230 plus 200 that's going to give us 430 that's his earning to date so it national insurance now national insurance is two percent so we're going to find two percent of the gross salary for each employee So 2% of 780, that's $15.60, 2 percent of 392, that's $7.84, and 3% of 200, 2% of 200 is four dollars all right income tax let's go back to our note so it says income tax is calculated on the balance after national insurance and income tax is 10 percent so we have to take the national insurance from the gross pay and then find 10 percent of it so 780 for allen subtract $15.60 that's going to give you $764.10 then multiply that times 10% and that's going to give you $76.44 good let's do that now for Basco so it is $392 taking seven dollars eighty four from it you're going to be left with three hundred and eighty four dollars sixteen cents and then find ten percent of that and that's going to give you thirty eight dollars and forty two cents you would actually get thirty eight dollars point four one six rounding off to two decimal places so last person comings we have $200 minus, minus 4 and we're going to find 10% of that which is 196 finding 10% of 196 and that's going to give you $19.60 so let's take now the life insurance now these were different amounts so we have 35 20 and 10 so we have 35 20 and 10 20 I don't know why it's doing this but we're going to use it until and 10 all right so let me move over this one it needs to go over a little bit more good 
All right, and for credit union, 150, 50, 25. So we have 150, 50, and 25. Make sure that that's correct. 150 50 25 good so total deductions so we are going to add up our national insurance income tax life insurance and credit union to get our total deductions so we have fifteen dollars sixty plus seventy six forty four plus 35 plus 150 and that's 277.04 all right let's add up now for basco so we have seven dollars 84 plus 38 dollars and 42 cents plus 20 and 50 and deduction is 116.26 last person we have four dollars plus 19 dollars 60 plus 10 dollars plus 25 and that's going to be 58 dollars 60 cents good so our net pay is now going to be your gross pay less your deductions all right so it's for Alan Alan's gross pay is 780 total deductions is 277.04 so that's five oh two ninety six cents. Then for Basco, its gross pay is three ninety two, and we're taking a hundred and sixteen dollars twenty six cents from that. So he's left with two seventy five seventy four cents as his take home pay. We have Cummings. So Cummings is two hundred two hundred minus fifty eight dollars sixty and we're left with one forty one forty cents so these would be what is it each person takes home at the end of the week good all right moving on all right, so question three now, we have the supervisor of Bronx Manufacturing provides you with the following report regarding four employees. So we have Sarah, Jill, Maxine, and Raji. They worked, so Sarah worked 44, Jill worked 38, Maxine worked 41, Raji worked 55. Workers are expected to work a basic, let me take this off so I can highlight. All right, so they're expected to work a basic 35 hour week for which they are paid $15. So while others had 40 as their basic um, basic hour, this is 35. So anything in excess of 35, that's overtime. Oh. Time and a half is paid for hours worked in excess of basic. So anything greater than 35 is time and a half. Deductions are made, so pension is 3%, national insurance is 2.5, ed tax is 2.5, and income tax is 20% after deducting national insurance and pension fund. So in this case, we have two. And you're given the payroll sheet to complete here. All right, so let's get into that.
All right, so here it is asking for ors. Let me switch now. I can add two. So here it is asking for ors. So let's check. So Sarah worked 44. So the basic hour is 35. That's, that's generic for everyone. So each person is going to work 35 as their basic. Good. But she worked 44. So we are going to take 35 from the 44. And that will be your now left with 9 hours for overtime. Jill, let's scroll back up to find Jill's information. Jill is 38. So we are going to have 35 here. And then 35 from 38 is going to leave you with 3. So that's 3 hours overtime. Then we have Maxine, 41. So that's 35 here. And then 41. 41 less 35, that's 6. So we have 6 hours of overtime for Maxine and Raji. Ooh, gone too far. Raji worked 55. So Raji is 35. And we need to take this 35 from 55. And he worked 20 hours. I can't believe I just put that in the calculator. 20. All right, good. So gross pay, and we need to work it out. In this case, it was you were not given a slot. So it's $15 for basic pay. So the person worked 35 at $15. And there's overtime pay. Overtime, so there's nine hours of overtime um, times one and a half of 15. So this gross pay now is seven hundred and twenty seven dollars fifty cents hope you all got the same answer all right so let's work now so for jill it's same thing we're going to do 35 times 15 the difference now is the overtime so that's three times 1.5 times 15. so in total that is 592 50 cents so that's 35 times 15 plus 3 times 15 times 1.5 and that's how i got the 592 then we have maxine so maxine worked six so hers is going to be 660 and raji raji worked 20 so that's 975. Raja sounds like a boy name to me, so I'm going to say he. Alright. So that's the different gross pay there. Alright, so let's look back now. What did they say about pension? Why am I going back so far? So pension is 3% of gross pay. So we need to find 3% of each of the gross pay here. So that's 3% of 727.50. And that's going to give you 21.83. Let's work on Jill. So it's 3% of 592.50. That's 17.78. All right, moving on to Maxine. So that's 3% of 660, and that's $19.80. For Raji, 3% um, of 975, and that's $29.16. Good. So, NIS is 2.5% um, of gross pay. So just put in the 2.5, put in the percentage, multiplication sign, times gross pay, so that's 727.50, because we're working out for Sarah first, and that's going to be $18.19. I don't want it like that. Oh, that's a lot to get up. 
and then for Jill it's going to be 2.5 times 592.5 and that's going to be where did it go fourteen dollars eighty one cents okay there it is all right so for maxine it's going to be two and a half percent of 660 and that's going to give you that is going to give you sixteen dollars fifty all right then now we're going to find three percent of um raji which is 975 so that's going to give you 24 38 24 dollars 38 cents all right all right so ed tax ed tax is the same 2.5 so basically we just need to write back the same figures in the under in tax because it's the same calculation so income tax now income tax said that we are to subtract the nis and pension from gross pay and then find 20 percent of it so it is 727.50 minus pension which is $21.83 minus N tax minus NIS, sorry, and then find 20% of that. So you're supposed to get $137.50. All right, let's go for Jill now. So we're going to have gross pay minus $17.78 here, minus $14.81 here. You're going to get $559.91 multiplied by 20%. So I got 111.98. Good. Moving on. So we're going to take 660. We're going to subtract pension of $19.80 and $16.50. You're going to get $623.70 times 20%. So the answer is going to be $124.74. Last one for income tax. So we're going to take $975. And we're going to take from the $975, $29.16. And then we're also going to subtract $24.38. We're left with $921.46 times 20%. And that's $184 dollars 29 cents good so total deductions we are going to add a pension nis ed tax and income tax so that is 2183 plus 18.19 plus 18.19 plus 137.50 and I got one ninety five seventy one cents. Moving on now to Jill. So Jill is seventeen seventy eight plus fourteen eight one plus fourteen eight one plus one 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 point nine eight. So that's $159.38. Alright. Then Maxine. It's going to be um, $19.80 plus $16.50 plus $16.50 plus $124.74. And that's $177.54. Alright, so $29, $29.16, and then we have $24.38, plus $24.38 again, plus $184.29, and I got $262.21. Alright.
right? So net pay now is going to be total gross pay less total deductions. So Sarah, that's seven twenty seven five zero minus one ninety five seventy one, and you're left with five hundred and thirty one dollars seventy nine cents. That's her take home pay. That's what she's going to get in her hand. Jill. For Jill, we have five ninety two fifty. And we're going to take 159.38 from it. So she's left with 433.12 12 cents. Then we have Maxine. And Maxine is 660 minus 177.54. So take home is 482.46. Then we have for Raji. So Raji is 975 and we're going to take 262.21 from it. So in hand, he or she will go home with $712.79. And that is your payroll sheet. And that would have given you 70 marks on the exam. Pretty simple. Alright, so which of the following are not relevant to the preparation of a payroll? Alright, so time cards are important. The time cards basically show the hours work. So what is like a punch card that persons will will have in the address preparation? No. So because of preparation, you're going to have no for the address. But tax rate is important. Employee age, no, because that should not be a factor. And then tax code number. Each person has a tax number. In Jamaica, we use TRM. In your heck of the woods, I'm not sure. Social security number for persons in the U.S. So, state the main purpose for which the pension fund is used. So, pension fund is used for, basically for retirement. So, when you pay towards your pension, instead of when you retire, you are basically just left without a salary there is a portion of your salary that you pay to that so when you retire you still get a monthly payment it's not going to be at the same let's say you were earning ninety thousand dollars it doesn't necessarily mean that because you're paying pension then at the age of retirement you're going to get ninety thousand dollars you're going to get a fraction of that so pension is used for retirement be retirement benefits Alright, and I think that's that for the questions. Alright, so thank you for your time. Hopefully this video was informative and it will help somebody out there. Alright, bye-bye.